and this is how it begins. My drawing desk, my uh, pencil or pencils, pencil sharpener. It is this portable one. Although I have showed you before this larger uh, fixed upon the surface of my desk. This is the other side of the desk. The first side is the computer one and this one is where I uh, make things happen on paper. That's it. And voila. The lead is sharpened. So I can proceed with this drawing. Let's just for uh, the argument's sake, argument's sake, uh, remind ourselves with the rough sketch I did and took the photo with my cell phone. Hence the quality. And this is the finished or rather tightened sketch. And now the tightened sketch is already in the process of being treated with graphite. Let me proceed. Many of you, especially if you are from Italy or ex-Yugoslavia, you remember Bonelli comic called Zagor. Well, I'm drawing in front of you the very hero of the series, the fearless Zagor, which is the most unusual hero that ever was, or so I think. Because, you see, Zagor is Italian comic from the famous publisher of comic books, Bonelli, besides Dylan Dog, Nick Ryder, Martin Mystere and uh, Dampier and so many other uh, titles. Uh, Bonelli is mostly known as publisher of westerns. Not just spaghetti westerns, mind you. Westerns, period. So Google Bonelli with double L. They have site also in English, so you can uh, see what it is about. As far as I know, they are popular in home country in Italy, a little bit in France, a little bit in Germany, here and there, but mostly they are insanely popular in the countries that used to make Yugoslavia, which is now separated after one of the bloodiest civil wars into six different entities. I'm not going to bother you with history, I'm just going to tell you that Zagor is insanely popular in Serbia and I presume in other now independent republics. But in Serbia, no Batman, no Captain America, no Iron Man, no Spider-Man, no Daredevil and so on and so forth can compare to Zagor who lives in a very special version of Wild West. Yes, he lives in the Wild West, but he is not a cowboy. There is no Stetson hat on his head. And, believe it or not, Zagor lives in a very special version, so to speak, of the uh, Old West where, amongst all the cities in the prairie, the minor towns, and so on, there is an honest-to-God jungle! Can you believe it? In the Wild West, in completely different climate, there is jungle! And Zagor is some kind of a Tarzanish, superheroish... Uh, protector of that realm with the absolutely phenomenal help from the worst Mexican stereotype called Chico 
a short pudgy bloke who is some kind of comedy relief kind of a character you know and uh, don't ask me why don't ask me how it just works and suffice to say people love Zagor's adventures me oh. frankly I haven't read a single Zagor comic book I'm not going to belittle that comic I'm not going to criticize it let's just say it is not my kettle of midget turtles and I uh, simply didn't find myself interested in reading that comic people just go crazy about Zagor I remember uh, Ferry that is the name of Zagor's uh, creator and the main artist who died recently when he came to Serbia it was absolutely sensational I doubt that uh, such media attention and fan excitement could be uh, created if Frank Miller or John Romita whether senior or junior or 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 Dave Finch or Frank Cho if they appeared I strongly doubt that they would uh, be such a big deal as Galliano Ferri was when he visited shortly before before his untim untimely death my country I apologize I forgot uh, which comics festival it was but he was there and as I said he was sensation of the first rate unimaginable phenomenal uh, as far as I know there is only one Serbian artist nowadays officially working for uh, for Bonelli and uh, drawing uh, uh, Zabor mind you there are several Serbian artists working for Bonelli on various other titles but regarding Zagor there is only one artist if I'm not wrong okay let me plug my colleagues Branislav Banekerac is an artist who draws Zagor uh, Laci Krstic, he draws for Bonelli uh, several uh, Western comics and there is also Darko Perovic who used to draw uh, Il Magico Vento with several other artists and as far as I know nowadays he's drawing something else so these are the three artists that I'm aware of my countrymen and I know all of them I even think I am friends with some of them so they are contributing to the Bonelli magic as I said Zagor lives in this very special kind of Old West with uh, the real jungle in the prairie I think there might be a story that explained how all these things happened how did uh, Zagor uh, actually wind up there in that uh, jungle and how did he become what he became I'll just make a note here for all of you who would like to do a research so if you are intent on going to Google please this is how it's written Zagor and the publisher is Bonelli Bonelli Italia come on oh dear markers markers aha uh -huh. here it is
Bonelli Italia. Give it a whirl. I'm sure you are going to find a lot of interesting things and maybe, who knows, you will become a regular reader of those really special comics. My most favorite used to be and probably still is Dylan Dog, the investigator of supernatural things and uh, whilst I lived in London, in England, I tried and almost managed to visit personally all the places including Craven Road uh, where Dylan Dog allegedly lives. Uh, anything that was mentioned in the comic and I managed to find out that it's true, I went and visited it. What I'm doing now with a graphite pencil, which, mind you, has quite a hard lead. Let me check out. It is F. F probably stands for fine. It is something between H and 2H, or maybe HB and H, I'm not sure. But F hardness is quite difficult to be found nowadays. And I had a friend who gave me several uh, boxes with uh, those F LEDs and I'm really grateful. They are my most favorite and I love drawing with them. In most cases I don't draw like, uh, you know, from the beginning to the end with uh, these uh, LEDs. I use them mostly for finishing the rough sketch like this one. Whether rough sketch was done in graphite or blue lead or red, my most favorite. Why do I do it? Well, as I, I think explained sometime earlier or in one of previous videos, I really hate my way of drawing, which is quite scribbly, you know. I'm not able to draw uh, precisely. I always have my pencil roam and scribble, so if I do it with graphite pencil, it looks like, uh, you know, uh, like someone ate a lot of graphite and then uh, overdid it and vomited uh, on paper. So I use a color pencil. You see here, this line? I hope it is visible. Uh, Zagor's head was a little bit higher and I decided to lower it so I can have this pose which uh, Deadpool famously proclaimed in his movie Superhero Landing. All characters, whether they are Marvel or DC superheroes, when they jump from certain height, they always manage to land like this, you know, very attractive pose. Everybody does it. Spider-Man does it. Daredevil does it. Iron Man does it. I mean, Black Widow does it. So, I wanted Zagor in this uh, superhero landing pose. And he is some kind of a superhero because on his chest you can notice this insignia which looks like some kind of a bird or whatever this represents. I don't know what it is. I'm, I admit, I'm totally out of the Zagor mythos. So I don't know what this represents. Maybe he's a spiritual animal or who knows. So he has a costume. Try going on Google Images and Google Zagor and you might actually get uh, a lot more visual references who he is and how he looks and especially his uh, inseparable Mexican friend Chico. Chico, it is apparent, exists only to be a comical relief. 
and uh, his role is in the comic the role of usually a female character he is in constant trouble so our intrepid is it intrepid or interpid intrepid i think hero zagor has to save his uh clots of a friend and uh usually arrives at the last minute on many drawings they are shown walking hand in hand or arm under the arm can you believe it uh, i leave it to others to decide about the nature of, of of their relationship i'm not going to suggest anything i can only say that uh, zagor is in most cases very well drawn strip and uh, frankly although i gave my best to read it i couldn't i couldn't go through it sorry it is nothing against the comic it is how i reacted to the to the uh, comic book but i have to say that i managed to go through the movie zagor which is made in turkey without any respect towards intellectual property without any uh, restraint in turkey they just make films as they please films even with spider-man as a murderer who attacks women in bathrooms in showers so captain america and similar characters of course in turkish version chase down spider-man to catch him and uh, dispose of him zagor is a ridiculously phenomenal piece of i don't know whether it is camp or is it uh, is it really played for real i laughed my head off although it is obvious that it is not a comedy give it a try all those movies are on uh, youtube it is in most cases nothing to do with the real zagor from comics but it looks really worth watching that's what i would say uh, the thing that uh, makes me concentrate on this particular drawing is there is a new friend I got and he asked me what he asked other artists to draw him to draw for him uh, his favorite comic book hero guess who so I'm doing it and I'm approaching it like a professional uh, task in spite of the fact that I'm not paid at all for this so this is a freebie I'm doing for a friend but I took it as a challenge to draw something I don't usually draw and something that I actually well let's be honest that I don't like again it is nothing about the very character or the comic it is just me and how i feel about this creation as you can see i'm quite slow and i i don't know if other artists are like that i have seen these uh, videos where their hand moves unbelievably fast but i think it is uh, frame skipping uh, approach or uh, fast forward however you're go gonna call it yes i know that there are artists who are capable of 
really drawing fast, guess what? I'm not one of these guys, one of those guys, pardon me. So I'm going to do my best to draw the way I draw because the last thing I want is to is to make a drawing I'm really unhappy with because it looks rushed. I mean, sometimes when I think of it, I think I can't make a rushed uh, drawing even if I wanted to. Go figure. Uh, let's go back to these sketches. Uh, if you pay attention, I have uh, established the body shape first, then lower limbs, then arms, and last was head, which was drawn at first a little bit higher, and then lower. And I have divided the figure, the head and the body symmetrically with the center line, and then, and only then, I proceeded to uh, to tighten it with a more careful detailed delineation in red pencil too. And only then, when I'm uh, happy, I proceed with graphite pencil, and when it is finished, the drawing is not over. No, only half the job is done, because then I need to do inking, because the gentleman who asked me to do this, he wants the drawing properly inked, like for a comic. So, whilst I'm talking to you and uh, tightening in graphite, this drawing, I'm thinking, what can I add in the background? Should I add anything in the background? And many of you might ask me, sorry, I have to drink water, it is uh, very dry and hot here where I am. Excuse me. Anyways, I was asked on many occasions, why do I waste time? on so many cleanups, on so many uh, amends and, 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 and changes and this and that. Aren't you losing spontaneity? I was asked. Well, maybe I am losing indeed. But then I was studying how other artists, especially those I respect immensely, how they do it. And I found out that they actually, either with the use of colored pencils or extensive cleanup using a eraser, right? Or uh, here it is, the putty rubber, you know, the putty rubber or um, kneaded eraser they clean up the drawing and constantly tighten it until it becomes what they are happy with. And I belong to that uh, group of people. I'm not able to do a rough and then say, that's it, now I'm going to spontaneously render it and leave it as it is. Usually, I'm enormously unhappy with such drawings. I don't know, I haven't decided whether I'm going to do a video on inking this drawing in particular or any other drawing in the future. But trust me, you need to experiment if you want to be an artist. Give it a try how it is to leave all spontaneity in, or if you render it to death with as many cleanups as possible, so the decision is finally yours. And it is up to you whether you are going to be spontaneous or whether you are going to just finish it 
after many, many amends. Here on this very desk on which I am drawing now used to be a light table or a light box or animation table, you know. It is a device where you turn the light under the semi-transparent uh, surface, usually glass or uh, some kind of uh, milky white uh, plastic. Uh, I forgot the name in English of that uh, piece of plastic. The point is uh, that very purpose uh, can be achieved with uh, your window during the daylight, you know. You put the sketch you want to clean up or amend or whatever and you just you just draw with a fresh piece of paper on top of the sketch. You just draw and do the cleanup or whatever is the intention of yours to do with uh, the drawing. It is in another room because I would like also to have a working space in another room. I don't care, I don't need, you know, a special uh, room that is going to be just for guests or whatever. I don't need guest room, it is going to be working room too. So my light table is over there. And who knows, maybe one of the next videos is going to deal with something I'm going to draw or amend or clean up on top of that very table. So keep your eyes peeled, watch this space. Maybe the very next time I'm going to do it. See, I'm filling in with graphite this area that is supposed to be black instead of doing this X, 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 X. Some people like to do this. They exit and some people just enjoy this endless kind of time wasting with feeling it like this. It is up to you. On many occasions I do this. I lift the drawing against the light to see if I have made uh, if I've made mistakes. And in most cases, yes, mistakes are gross, but now I don't see some discrepancies, so I will continue sketching as everything is kind of fine. I had people watching me draw and they say, how do you know when you press more or when you take it easy? I don't know. It is spontaneous. But in most cases I know the lines tending to be under, they have to be heavier than those lights there. Because I have even this arrow signifying how the light is coming. I know that this is going to be darker. I can even have a little bit of shadow here. And also, I decided now that I want this to be this, see? It's 
certain aspects you sort out in advance and certain aspects just appear like wow I omitted this I should better put it there like this Uh, in in the comic, Zagor is usually drawn with almost skin tight jeans. I wonder who is his tailor. The same can be said about Phantom. You know the comic Phantom, the ghost who walks, who never dies, etc. I mean. He's there in the African jungle, uh, dishing justice left and right, and uh, from the very beginning in medieval times, he has those... Uh, uh, he has the costume made of skin-tight matter. I mean, who could uh, make such a costume for him in the jungle? I liked Alex Ross' illustration, where he drew Phantom dressed only in his uh, belt with guns on the side and uh, he didn't wear any costume he used probably some herbs or some fruits berries whatever to paint his naked body in purple and that makes more sense than uh, parading around in a costume which looks like uh, something Batman or Spider-Man or Daredevil would uh, wear, you know? Oh, by the way, I love this movie magic thing where they completely got rid of Lycra and they are dressing superheroes and superheroines in those uh, almost motorcyclist um, costumes, you know, heavy leather and stuff. It's something that I presume uh, superheroes would, if they existed, they would probably wear equipment or clothes like that, rather than easy to tear uh, Lycra costumes, you know? When I was a kid, when I saw first superhero comics, I assumed that they are made of leather. But they didn't look like leather. They looked like skin, only painted. The way I described Phantom's costume just a minute or so ago, you know? Why did superheroes have costumes like that? I'll tell you. The, the circus aesthetics dictated it because the only idea of a circus strong woman or strong man were those artists appearing before the audience in those uh, skin tight lycra costumes, you know, which appeared like uh, paint or dye over their skin. I think it is more than ridiculous to have uh, something like that. First of all, because of wear and tear. And second of all, because it's impractical, folks. Seriously. You need something to protect you. Not something that is going to uh, tear, it seems, uh, if you breathe in uh, more deeply, if you know what I mean. And the whole aesthetics about uh, 
strong men and women has changed and circus lost its importance from the yesteryear therefore nowadays we have different ideas how heroes especially those meta humans should be equipped dressed and so on although Zagor doesn't have Stetson hat a compulsory uh, fashion detail for all the Westerners he still has his gun which he carries on the opposite side and his uh, his stone hammer or uh, as they call it in the comic uh, axe is his main weapon I don't know what is more humane to whack someone with a bullet or to murder that person uh, with a stone axe which is another ridiculous element I'm sorry I'm not going to be uh, evil and to, 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 to ridicule um, fans of Zagor I really respect them the same way as I respect people who say that they like Prince Valiant and nothing else or Rip Kirby or, or, or Mandrake the magician whatever or those who say that they hate comics period I respect it I also dislike many other things but I'm not mentioning it not because I'm in fear to offend someone frankly I don't care anymore seriously I don't give a toss but I keep it for myself I only mentioned my uh, stance towards uh, Zagor because this was quite a challenge to draw the best way I can the character from a comic I've never ever managed to read in my life and yet to do it to do it properly decently and with the same respect I would uh, invest uh, into I don't know drawing Deadpool or, or, or whatever it is that I really love and would be more than happy to do okay so this is the handle of a of an axe or hammer oh come to think of it uh, I I almost appear like I have stolen the pose from mighty Thor that's not the case people I swear to you I didn't steal the pose from Thor but because of the weapon our hero is uh, showcasing here he looks with the addition of a billowing cape he could look almost like a Thor and with blonde hair and whatnot right let's finish uh, the hammer then and we are already 40 minutes into our drawing adventure oh this is going to be quite a long video and it doesn't make me happy and I assume neither it makes you happy because virtually nothing is happening look just my hand hmm this is improvised I really don't know how someone draws um, stone I hope this communicates stone that's it
you know what? I think this is taking too long. But hopefully you got an idea how I do it. You see this blob? That's my sweat dripping and uh, turning this uh, piece of paper into a mush. I reckon I'm going to stop now bid you a good night or good day and uh, hopefully we'll do something uh, exciting and uh, different than this next time and until next time dear stargazers be good stay healthy don't let anyone make you feel afraid and be happy Salute, Uncle Boyan, out. Ciao.